Shepard, sure. thank you. Okay. ABC Action News. Now at 11, bloodied and bruised, a father catching a teen he says was in the act of sexually assaulting his son. I got him in a bloody puddle for you right now, officer. That father faced with an unimaginable situation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jameson Euler. And I'm Wendy Ryan. Social media tonight buzzing about a dad taking justice into his own hands to protect his 11-year-old son. Our Alex Hobson joins us live in the newsroom with more. Alex? Well, at this very hour, take a look. The story has been shared more than 1,000 times on our Facebook page with folks speaking out overwhelmingly in support of the father who took matters into his own hands when he caught the alleged abuser he trusted as his son's babysitter. A beaten and bruised Raymond Frolander stood before a judge and didn't say a word during his first appearance in court. Daytona Beach police arresting Frolander for sexually assaulting an 11 year old boy. His face severely bruised after the boy's father caught him in the act and then beat him unconscious. This phone call to 911 happened shortly after. I just walked in and found a grown man molesting and I got him in a bloody puddle for you right now, officer. Okay, sir, well, sir, sir. You discover that he has been uh, sexually abusing him in your home. You know, father, father did what a father had to do. Police found Frolander motionless on the floor of the apartment where the sexual battery occurred. First responders had to take him to the hospital to be checked out. I sent him an ambulance. He's gonna need one. What, any weapons involved? My fist and my foot. Police say the victim told them Frolander had been assaulting him since he was eight years old. You think to yourself, here's a young man whose innocence was taken away from him. You know, eight, eight to 11 year olds should be outside riding their bike and playing sports and playing video games. Frolander did not receive a bond and will stay in jail for the time being. Investigators are making sure he has not victimized any other children. And get this, police said Frolander admitted he had sexual relationship with the victim, reportedly saying, I'm guilty at the end of his interview with police. As for the father, he's not facing any criminal charges. Reporting live in the newsroom, Alex Hobson, ABC Action News. Teenager learns his punishment for killing his mother and shooting his father in a dispute over a video game. Kevin Freeman is just back from Elyria and joins us now with all the details. Kevin? Well, Tracy, 17-year-old Daniel Petrick claimed that the video game made him do it, and the judge somewhat agreed. He sentenced him to life in prison with a chance for parole in 23 years. Petrick shook his head and held back tears at times during the sentencing this morning. The teen, who was 16 at the time, was convicted of killing his mother, Sue Petrick, and shooting his father, Reverend Mark Petrick, inside their home in Wellington in October 2007. Prosecutors say he was angry that they had taken away a Halo 3 video game. Defense attorneys argued that Daniel was so addicted to the game that he was in withdrawal, and he may not have realized that his parents would not come back. I love the game. He realizes that he has caused so much pain for so many people. And not just my family. Our church was deeply wounded by his actions. And he carries that guilt with him as well. I remain fearful that if Danny gets out of prison and somebody else takes away his new pastime, whether it's a girlfriend that leaves him, that this may be the next thing that happens. Prosecutors had asked Judge James Burge to sentence Daniel Petrick to life in prison without parole. Tracy, his family did not speak to the media afterward, but their attorney says that they are satisfied with the 23 years to life, although they still believe that that is too long. They say they've forgiven him. Just a tragic story all the way around. Kevin Freeman reporting live from a newsroom. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Kurt Williams. And I'm Barbara Sear, in for Beverly Kidd. A, a man with the sign of the Antichrist, tattooed on his face is behind bars, charged with murder. And for the tiny town of Duck, North Carolina, it's the first time they're dealing with murder. Police say he stabbed a man in church. Investigator Mike Mather has this story. If you look at this mugshot, you can't help but notice the 666 tattooed above William Long's left eyebrow. Long now charged with murder for an argument inside this church has a lengthy criminal past 
Beyond the religious imagery, the Town of Duck police are not sure if there's another meaning to the ink. We've been talking with Department of Corrections personnel about that. We haven't specifically identified uh, what the significance is at this time, but it, it is absolutely something we're looking at. First Sergeant Jeff Ackerman says as best he can tell, Long didn't specifically seek out his victim in this church. Long and another homeless man named George Provost were in line making sandwiches and they argued. There was a, a drawer in the kitchen. It was labeled knives and a suspect reached into that drawer, grabbed the knife and obviously saw what happened. What happened was the town of Duck's first murder. Both men were in the Duck United Methodist Church as part of a charity program. Churches in the Outer Banks take turns providing food and shelter to the Barrier Islands homeless. They were simply trying to help two gentlemen out that really had nowhere else to go. But Ackerman also knows many of the homeless people have criminal histories and sometimes mental health struggles. There's never been a problem here until now, but because of what happened, things could soon change. Ackerman says he and other police officials will soon meet with charity organizers. 12-year-old girls are facing possible criminal charges after a video rant surfaced online. As CBS 2's Alice Gaynor shows us, parents say it shows the girls threatening to murder fellow classmates. Two 12-year-old girls, one in front of the camera and one behind it. One by one, listing the classmates and administrators they want to kill. They laugh often in the more than 20 minute rant, but parents of the children named in the video are taking this seriously. My daughter, she woke up about four times last night to lock the doors. She woke up in nightmares. Angelica Marrero's seventh grade daughter was on the list. So was Jackie's daughter, who says a day before the video came out, one of the girls read a note aloud in school of who she wanted to kill. My daughter had called me crying hysterically at around 1130 telling me that mommy, this girl just told me that she's going to kill me. Parents can understand why the school didn't do something sooner. So today they met with officials at School 27, a meeting even the mayor showed up to. When asked afterward, he said he didn't believe there was ever a serious threat to any student. Yeah, I've not been apprised of any specific details, but all indications are no. Some of the parents, though, have pressed charges against the girls. The two were taken out of school and suspended as police investigate. We tried knocking at one of the girls' homes, but no one answered. Parents say they want to see these two get help. We're concerned parents here. The child obviously needs help. Help for them and also for their shaken children. In Patterson, Al Skeener, CBS 2 News. The CBC 10's Neff TD Jack Wes is live at Philadelphia Police Headquarters. Neff, you spoke to Pickett's family members. Jacqueline, I did, and you know, they're having a really difficult time with this. They say all he wanted to do was work in the music industry, and he did that. He worked with stars like Nikki, Rihanna, and Justin Timberlake, but now he's gone, and his family can't seem to understand why. It's just mixed emotions, angry, sad, frustrated, you know, because my family's not taking this well. He's too distraught to show his face, but he wants you to know how the killer took more than a life. He didn't deserve this, period. He didn't deserve this. His cousin, Devin Pickett, who's a tour manager for Nicki Minaj, was stabbed to death while out with a group of friends. Nicki's having rehearsal for her upcoming tour, so they were all here for her. I guess they were out celebrating and things just... Things just went wrong. The stabbing happened overnight in West Oak Lane. The victim's family says Pickett, who's from New York, was in town making preparations for Nikki's tour with Philly rapper Meek Mill. Police say Pickett was hanging out at the Shea Bar and Grill with Eric Parker, who also works for Nikki, and three other friends. They say when the bar closed around 2.30 in the morning, the men got into a fight with another group of men. Pickett and Parker were stabbed. Somebody drove the two victims to the hospital where Pickett was pronounced dead. Dead. Shortly after, Nicki Minaj took to social media and Instagrammed a picture of the two victims saying they were in Philly to rehearse for her upcoming tour. It's sad. It's sad. As for Pickett's cousin, he came here from New York to see the spot where his loved one was killed, a spot now marked by a small vigil. He set an example for a lot of other guys in this industry, and it's sad to see this happen.
Now, we know that police are reviewing surveillance video from the bar and area cameras. They say that the suspect they're looking for took off in a gray Buick LeSabre. The city is putting up a, re a reward for $20,000. Meantime, Nicki Minaj's tour is set to start off next month in Sweden. That is the very latest from police headquarters tonight. Nefertiti Jacquez, NBC10 News. Two families watched their 12-year-old daughters in handcuffs before a judge in adult court Monday afternoon, just days removed from what police call a horrific attempted homicide. The Waukesha Police Department is deeply saddened that this 12-year-old girl had to suffer through this horrific crime. Saturday morning, a bicyclist came across a severely wounded 12-year-old girl near Big Bend Road and Rivera Drive in Waukesha. She had been stabbed 19 times in a wooded area near there, with some wounds missing her arteries by just one millimeter. Many of the stab wounds struck major organs, but incredibly and thankfully, the victim survived this brutal assault. Saturday afternoon, a sheriff's deputy found the two young suspects walking near I-94. Police say the girls spent several months plotting to kill their victim and lured her into the woods. Both suspects had a fascination with a fictitious character that often posted to a website that is a collection of small stories about death and horror. The criminal complaint refers to that online character as Slenderman. One of the girls told police it was the hope that the victim would die and they would see Slender and know he exists. Parents should not be allowing their children to have unrestricted or unmonitored internet usage, whether it be on their computer, on their smartphone, on their PlayStation. Both girls face first degree attempted intentional homicide charges. When police questioned her, one of the suspects said, it was weird that I didn't feel any remorse. This is a very disturbing investigation. Now, both girls remain in custody tonight on $500,000 cash bail. I am told that the uh, victim of this case is still in the hospital. She is still recovering, but we are told that police say she is in stable condition. Much more on this story coming up tonight later on at 10. For now, we are live outside the Waukesha County Courthouse. Lane Kimball, CBS 58 News. Lane, thank you. The Waukesha School District sent an email to parents about the stabbing since it involves students. It says, in part, as our thoughts and support go out to the victim and her family, we have also provided counselors at all schools where this may have caused distress among students. The email includes an attachment with a police department press release. And it warns parents that the information is unsettling. Still, it offers advice on how to talk to children about it. Charge it. On Saturday, May 31st, 2014, at approximately 9.50 a.m., the Waukesha Police Department was notified by a concerned citizen that a 12-year-old girl was stabbed in the area of Big Bend Road in the city of Waukesha. The Waukesha Police and Fire Departments responded and located the girl. The Waukesha Fire Department transported her to the Waukesha Memorial Hospital where she was treated for her injuries. The Waukesha Police Department is deeply saddened that this 12-year-old girl had to suffer through this horrific crime. We are pleased to report that she is in stable condi condition. The victim was friends with the suspects, and all three attended the same middle school. All three of the girls are 12 years old. Both suspects had a fascination with a fictitious character that often posted to a website that is a collection of small stories about death and horror. Based on our investigation, it is believed that the suspects had planned to kill the victim for several months. The three girls had a sleepover at the house of one of the suspects on Saturday night, May 30th. In the morning, the suspects went to David's Park and lured the victim into the woods near Big Bend Road, south of Rivera Drive, to play a game. Once there, one suspect held the victim down well, the other suspect stabbed her 19 times in the arms, legs, and torso. Many of the stab wounds struck major organs, but incredibly and thankfully, the victim survived this brutal assault. The suspects left the area on foot. The victim was able to crawl out of the woods onto the roadway near the end of Big Bend Road, where she was discovered by a bicyclist. She was transported to the Waukesha Memorial Hospital by the Waukesha Fire Department, where she underwent surgery for her injuries. We continued to search the wooded area for the missing two girls with the assistance of the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department, the New Berlin Police Department, the Town of Brookville Police Department, and Flight for Life. We wish to extend our sincere appreciation for their assistance. The suspects were located near I-94 at 2.24 p.m. by a Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. 
where they're both taken into custody without incident. We are pleased about the abundant cooperation and teamwork between our department